Here it is, day three of Overland Adventure 22 presented by Jeep. And we just woke up at this amazing campsite just outside the Bradshaw Trail in Southern California. And today is the day that we actually get to visit some really significant camps, such as Camp Costco, Camp Iron Mountain, and Camp Granite. And then we're gonna head to Vidal Junction, where it's gonna be our last night to break bread together and hang out and have a good time under the stars before our last day of Overland Adventure 22. Day three, uh, yesterday was a fantastic day. Day two, we hit an epic uh, overland trail yesterday with scenic views. We were riding the spine of uh, kind of a mountain range yesterday and it was just a fantastic trail. Probably one of the best I've ever been on and I've been doing this for over 20 years. So it was a great day. Uh, we got into camp uh, probably a little bit late into the evening, not too late. You know, had some nice dinner just really enjoyed yesterday it was a you know just a great time and day three is probably gonna be even better so the days just keep getting better as we go hey I'm Jason Riggs from Gilbert Arizona this is my 2021 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon eco diesel happy to be here on the Overland Adventure 2022 so I chose the JL primarily because of the powertrain options. Um, I loved the JK, but really wanted more power, better fuel economy, better drivability. And with the JL, I uh, had the option for the Eco Diesel and paired with the eight speed, it's just been a fantastic drivetrain. It allows me to cruise down the highway easily, pull hills without any problem and get tremendous fuel economy. The Jeep has a, um, a mild lift, 38 inch tires, uh, rooftop tent, and then in the back I've gone for kind of a uh, Swiss Army knife build out if you will. Nothing is really permanent, it's very flexible, uh, allows me to kind of change it up really quickly depending on the type of trip I'm doing. So one of my favorite things about overlanding really is the people. Most of my close friends these days really are tied to this community in some form or fashion. And then on a trip like this, you know, we have an assembly of uh, some familiar faces and a lot of new friends and everybody on this trip has been absolutely fantastic. So it's really great to have kind of kindred spirits and shared passions and be able to meet new people and then come together at night, break bread and just really enjoy uh, meeting a lot of new people. It's been great. So here we are at our first uh, camp of the day. This is Camp Coxcomb. And Camp Coxcomb was a little bit different than the other camps, or a little bit unique, where it had a lot of wood floors and, and wooden structures and walls and things that didn't exist at other camps. So there's some thought that maybe this one was a little bit more permanent than others. There was also a uh, relief map that was here that unfortunately erosion has kind of is starting to return to the earth. There's also an altar here that is on the south side of camp. And the other cool thing is off over in this direction, you can see Palin Pass, and Palin Pass is where the King's Throne is, or the, the overlook that Patton would sit at to watch the divisions before they graduated fight each other, essentially, in the past. And so that's visible from here too. And it's funny, because you have Highway 77 just running here, and if you didn't know, if you didn't see the marker on the side of the road, you'd have no idea what was here. And when you're walking around, you can still see all the, the rocks that show the outline of, of the roads and the camping areas, some of the division symbols, things like that. So we're just gonna walk around and explore, and then we'll head up the highway and we'll check out Camp Iron Mountain and take a view from there of uh, Camp Granite. We are at Camp Coxcomb here at the Overland Adventure 2022. This camp was amazing during World War II. Tens of thousands of US troops trained here. There's still rock outlining some of the roads and some of the walkways. Right now we're standing in, I think it was called Flag Circle, where there were a number of flags in the area, uh, kind of as you entered the camp. Well, walking into this flag circle here, I thought was pretty, kind of cool. I'm just trying to picture what it was like back in the day when they had you know, thousands of troops here and there were some structures to look at. And 
I'd like to see if there was any old pictures and stuff. Makes me want to dig a little bit more into the history. There's little historical artifacts kind of all over the place. Lots of broken glass, clearly that's from that period. And I found, although I put it back where I found it, a uh, 1943 wheat head penny, which very easily could have been dropped by one of the soldiers that was training here shortly before they went over to fight the war in North Africa. What hits me is like the soldiers that were actually out here, the things that they had to go through, and then like the general patent rule of like always being on the go. Like I can't imagine being out here trying to live, got a general yelling at you like, all right, time to move, like, oh, let's go. I can't even picture it, but being here really you know, puts me right into that heritage. Like this is a, a real thing that happened and changed the rest of the history of America. So it's a pretty special place. So here we are at our lunch stop. We're standing in the shadow of the Iron Mountain mountain range. This camp behind me is the best preserved out of all of the camps. It's called Camp Iron Mountain, of course, named after the, the mountain range that we're right next to. Back in about 1980 or so, the BLM put this fence around the whole camp to keep it from being disturbed for vehicles and things like that. Unfortunately, we're still allowed to walk into them and explore, and right behind me over my shoulder, you can see one of the crown jewels of the camp, and that's the altar for the Catholic service. There's another stone outdoor altar just off to the uh, northwest from here that was for Protestant services. And those were two of the only structures really in all of the camps that really remain today. They're well preserved. There's been some people who have helped uh, restore them over time. And it's just a really, you know, kind of a, a special spot. You go out to a place like this and you, you definitely feel religious or spiritual because of just how amazing the scenery is and the mountain ranges and all that. So to have this place of reflection for the troops back in the day, I'm sure was uh, really important to them. And we're checking it out. We're gonna spend some time here, have some lunch, wander through the camp, see what else we can find. And we'll uh, head on over to Vidal Junction. Today is kale salad and uh, smoked salmon. Not bad for the middle of the desert, huh? We've got some French bread we're gonna toast, slap some goat cheese and pepperoni, maybe a little tomato on there. Nice little simple lunch. Today's been pretty amazing. We, we, we had a couple discussions about how we're out here, it's October, it's like 90 degrees. We're in our air conditioned rigs and, and everybody's like, man, it's toasty, it's pretty hot out here. And, and these young soldiers, they were here I, you know, year round seemingly. So in the summer in these tanks that had no creature comforts that, that I've seen when we, were, when we were walking through them at the Patton Museum. And so it was, had to be tough, tough life for them. So we've reached the end of day three of Overland Adventure 22 presented by Jeep. Not as much off-roading today, but we did get a chance to visit some very important historical places such as Camp Iron Mountain and Camp Coxcomb with a view of Palin Pass. Some very important locations here in the Desert Training Center. So tomorrow, we're gonna leave Vidal Junction. We're gonna head north. Not only are we gonna hit Camp Ibis by the end of the day, we'll stop by the East Mojave Heritage Trail mailbox number four to sign in. And hopefully everybody on the trip will wanna collect one, two, and three. And by the end, we'll end up back at Goffs, California with a newfound respect for all the history and knowledge, especially around Patton's Desert Training Center and all of the great spots here in the Mojave Desert. <laughs>